हेलो सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर इमरान आसिफ आसिफ अली अली मोहम्मद मोहम्मद इमरान उम्मीद शेर रहमत इज माय वॉइस ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. Fine. Can we turn on your microphones because uh, today's topic may be a little bit complicated, so that is why we will have to communicate a lot. Asif Ali, you have raised hands. Can you hear me? Yes sir, I can hear. You. you have two IDs. Do we have the same? Ah uh, yes sir. Okay. Yes sir, I have. So uh, let's begin. Uh, we have got twelve, eleven, ten students in the class. Is there anyone who is yet to come? Muhammad Asad is here. Fine. Asadullah, any problem? You have raised hand. Asadullah, can you hear me? Asadullah, are you there? Can someone help Asadullah? Please make him turn on the microphone or you know the voice call by clicking on that option icon on the left bottom side of the screen. Someone may. Hello, can... sir. Yes, yeah, Asad, are you there? Yes, sir. I am. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. and we have Muhammad Asad. Muhammad Asad, are you there? Fine. Let's begin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the previous class, uh, we started language families or language history in change. Fine. So we talked about philology, language family, uh, then certain diagrams and sketches we took into consideration. Then. We talked about uh, the ethnologue, ethnologue and ethnologue, ethnologue result. Then uh, largest language families in the world by the number of languages and largest families of the world by the number of speakers. Uh, then we talked about language isolates and uh, today we are going to talk about family connections. Fine. Uh, did we talk about cognates? No sir. Okay, fine. We didn't talk. No sir. So let's start with family connection. Uh, whatever we have discussed so far, uh, I mean till this very topic, language isolate is is clear to everyone. Yes sir. Okay, fine. Good. Family connections. In the previous class, we talked about. Uh, various language families. Fine. Then subfamilies were there, and then languages were there. Uh, look at this chart. For example, uh, we have this chart. Can you find uh, the Hindi language? Here it is. Can you see it? Hey, the Hindi language. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, Please sir. be with me. Okay, all of you. Uh, then we have uh, another language, which is Italian. Let's look for Italian language in the this language family, and here we have the Italian language. Fine. If you look at these two languages, they lie. You know, there is you know a lot of distance between these two geographical difference. Fine. Uh, same as the case with the family connections as well. Like if we can see, Hindi language belongs to the Sanskrit language family. Fine. 
Uh, and since Sanskrit language is come from the Indic language, but there is noise uh, in the video. Okay. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Now it's clear. Okay, the same. Do not create noise. Fine. Now, if you look at these two languages, Hindi and Italian, fine. We may simply say that uh, let's again uh, talk about biological families first of all, and then we'll try to relate biological families with language family. For example, we have a person who is living in, uh, in uh, India, fine. And another person who is uh, living, you know, in Spain or uh, some other country, fine. So apparently there does not seem to be any connection between those, those two people, fine. Because one is living in India and another person is living in uh, the European country. So obviously there will be no, no connection, no family connection, no biological connection between them, fine. Same is the case with languages as well. If you look at languages, so we have uh, this Hindi language and Italian, so uh, apparently we do not expect any language connections between these two languages, fine. But if we look deeply to these two languages, fine. Uh, ling fine. If we look at these two languages, we may find certain similarities, okay. I'll give you another example. You might have, you must have observed this phenomenon in your life that we see someone in Peshawar, for example, or when we go to, for example, uh, Islamabad or somewhere else, and we meet someone, and the person, you know, uh, the, the person seems familiar to us. And we say, Fine. And then usually the person says yes. So how do we come to know that the person, a particular person, is a relative, the cousin, second cousin, brother, or any other relative of that particular person because of the similarity of you know the face structure because of the similarity of the eyes of the color uh, the color of the eyes or because of the similarity of the skin color fine uh, body structure there are multiple similarities like if you look at twins so twins are usually you know they have got the very same uh, biological structure fine if you look at brothers so brothers they are just like like moralists they are like their parents and they are like you know siblings they are they, they, their personalities their physical structures made matches you know the structure of one another same is the case with cousins as well cousins are you know more or less alike in terms of uh, physical appearances now if you look at these two languages apparently they seem to have no connection at all fine no uh, linguistic connection with each other but uh, if we dig deeper, look at this, uh, the Hindi language and Italian language. Italian language is from uh, the Latin languages, basically. Look at this chart. It has come from the Latin language, fine. And Italian, uh, Hindi language, it has come from Sanskrit language. Now, how are these two languages linked linguistically? If you look at the word father. Fine. The word father is from the English language. Fine. Now look at Sanskrit language. In Sanskrit, we have Peter for father. Okay. In Sanskrit language, we have the word Peter for father. And in Latin language, we have the word Peter, Peter for father. Fine. So, so it's creating the noise. So again, noise. There is noise. Uh, yeah, fine. Fine. Now look at this. If you look at these two words, okay, uh, a word from Sanskrit language and another word from uh, Latin language. If you look at the, the these two words, we may find certain linguistic similarities. Similarities in the linguistic features. Fine. Now keep in mind when we talk about similarity in linguistic features or linguistic similarities, we refer to certain linguistic features, okay? Linguistic features are 
phonological features are there you are already uh, you have already started phonetics and phonology in this semester fine so asif is teaching with that subject so phonological features means features of pronunciation we have syntactic features syntactic features means the features of syntax the features of grammatical structures fine it is from syntax syntactic features then we have semantic features as you all know semantics is the study of meaning so semantic features means the, the features related to meaning fine and there can be uh, morphological structures as well morphological structure means you know formulation of uh, the morphemes in uh, the, the, the various you know morphological structures such as tree morphemes and bone morphemes and uh, even letters can be there graphological similarities can be there so if you look at these two words we will find certain linguistic features these kinds of features which are similar fine like if you look at the, their pronunciations so uh, the pronunciation of this word contains per sound it uh, you know ta or the sound and r sound fine and same is the case with this word as well it means there is phonological similarity between these two words fine if we look at the uh syntactic feature of, of of the these two words so both of them are nouns fine if we look at the uh you know morphological structure or graphological structure so spelling is more or less the same uh, semantic features are you know the most important ones uh semantic and phonological in terms of such kind of uh, similarities so if we look at the meanings the semantic features again semantic features are also the same because both these words have got the same meaning that is father fine now coming back to, back to that language family if we look at uh, the word uh, this one the word peter and peter peter from uh, sanskrit language this one or even hindi language so we have the word peter here fine and we have the word peter here it means that the two words are more or less alike fine they are similar linguistically they are similar because those linguistic features are more or less the same not completely more or less fine so these it's it's if we can conclude this that these two languages have got certain connections fine and such sort of connections are called family connections fine the linguistic connections or linguistic similarities between the between the between two languages are called family connections fine so uh, again we have another word like we have the word uh, biratar and we have the word firatar fine this one is from sanskrit and this one is from latin language and both of them refer to the word brother fine it means that if you look at the pronunciation if you look at the meaning if you look at the other structures it means that these two words are more or less the same they have got certain uh, linguistic similarities and this is how the latin language is linked to connected to the sanskrit language fine look at the word brother fine we have the word brother in the english language we have the word brother i think in uh, Persian language it is known as brother. Fine. Uh, Abrar, uh, Chatrali people. Do we have any Chatrali student in the class? In this class, is there any Chatrali student? No, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, they, they say uh, Abrar means uh, brother. How are you? Fine. So Abrar, they use the word Abrar to refer to brother. Chatrali people. Fine. So we have the word brother in English. We have the word brother in a uh, Persian language, fine. We even we have in Urdu as well, like we we say Chudri Birada, fine. So Urdu, English, uh, uh, Persian language, Chatrali language, all these languages have got this linguistic similarity. This one single word. There might there must be so many other similarities as well. I'm giving the example of only one word fine so such sort of linguistic similarities between uh, different languages are called family connections is this clear so far yes sir okay so uh, a, a bit confusion a bit confusion okay where is the confusion in which point 
which one is confusing? Uh, could you, uh, sir, could you, uh, no, the screen is sort of. Uh, which screen? Uh, sir, can you change uh, the screen? Uh, oh, that yeah. family connection. Sure, sure. Uh, can you come back? Yes. Uh, sir, here if you if you see a uh, brother, so uh, in yes. not this one, sir. Oh. Sir, uh, the previous this one. one. Yes. Yes, sir. This one. Fine. Sir, this uh, ancient Greek, uh, sir, this one is somewhat uh, different from the others. Uh, this uh, Piratar or something. Sir. If you look at this, this is Piratar. The bus sound is here. Here we have the first sound. Fine. And again, here we have the first sound. Fine. So it means this fa and fa, these two are related. Fine. In terms of the first sound. Fine. And in terms okay. of the later structure, all these three are related. Clear? So okay, a little bit differences must be there, but similarities. We need to look for the similarities in order to establish, in order okay. to determine and decide the uh, the family connections. Is this clear? Got it. Okay. Fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good. Fine. Good. Uh, let's uh, move to cognates. Cognates. We already talked about these words. Fine. Uh, uh, bra uh, brother and uh, father, uh, father and brother, similarly, brotheran, and uh, 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 example from the Sitrali language. Now, if we look at all these words, we have the concept of cognates here. Fine. What is a cognate? First of all, a cognate of a word in one language is a word in another language that has a similar form and is or was used with a similar meaning fine simply a cognate of a word in one language like in english we have the word mother okay now it's cognate in another language it's cognate the, the cognate of the english word mother in the german language is Mother, fine. Why mother is yes. why yes, why is mother the German word mother a cognate of the English word mother because of a similar form. Number one, because of a similar form, and number two, and is or was used with a similar meaning. Fine. Meaning. So we have yes. similar form and similar meaning meaning Fine? meaning yes Sim uh, simply you may say that the uh, syntactic phonological morphological this is related to form fine syntactic form morphological form and phonological form like spelling grammatical form and pronunciation uh, uh, pronunciation fine and on the other hand we have semantic form like uh, some the meaning so when these things are similar in two words we have got two different words in two different languages but those words have got similar form and similar meaning fine similar form means again i will repeat that those words have got similar pronunciation fine similar morphological form and similar syntactic form fine so this is called similar form and uh, then uh, another is they have got similar meaning. So when two words, we have two words in two different languages and uh, those words are similar in terms of form and in terms of meaning, such words are said to be the cognates of each other. Fine, like the cognates of the cognate of the English word mother in the German language is mother. Fine, the cognate of the English word father is the German word water. Fine. The cognate of the English word friend is the German word friend. Fine. Similarly, look at that example. Uh, Abrar, Chatrali language. Okay. Abrar, this is from Chatrali. We have brother from English. Fine. We have biradaran or birader from Urdu. Okay. 
and same is the case with uh, uh, that language as well, Persian language as well. Okay. Now, if we look at all these words, they are similar in terms of form and in terms of meaning as well. Form means pronunciation, okay, in uh, morphological form and uh, semantic form. Like meaning is meaning is also the same because all these words, abrar, brother, brother, all these words refer to the same thing. Fine, brother. So these two these words these words are called the cognates fine uh, the, the for example the cognate of the chatrali word abrar in the english word is brother and in the urdu language brother clear so what is a cognate a cognate is a word in one language fine uh, a, a cognate of a word a cognate of a word in one language, for example, language A, such as English, we have a word here, brother, fine. The cognate of a word in one language is a word in another language, fine. Brother, English, we have another language that is Chatrali, for example, okay. And here we have a brother. So here we have a word in another language, in language B, that is a brother. But these two words are similar in terms of form and these two words are similar in terms of meaning. So these two words are the cognates of each other. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, any confusion? No, sir. Okay. Another example of uh, cognates. The word madre in French language and the word madre in Italian language, if we look at the spelling, exactly the same. If we look at the pronunciation, exactly the same. If we look at the meaning, exactly the same. Fine, it means form is the same. Form means spelling and pronunciation, and meaning is the same. So we can say that the cognate of the Spanish word madre is, in the Italian language, is the word madre. Fine, similarly, Madre and Madre refer to mother. Fine. Here we may say that mother, that is from example from the English language. So we may say that the cognate, the, the English word mother, and the Italian word madre and the Spanish word madre, all these three are the cognates of one another. Fine. Mother uh, from English, madre from Italian, and madre from Spanish. A Spanish language, all these three are the cognates of one another, and all these three words formulate a cognate, uh, a, a cognate set. Fine. Uh, now moving to this one again, we have padre in Spanish language, we have padre in uh, Italian, and we have father in the English language. So all these three are the cognates of one another in different languages. Okay, we have uh, amigo, we have amigo. I don't know what do these words mean because uh, we do not know Italian and Spanish languages, but they seem to be uh, alike in terms of form and in terms of meaning. So again, they are also the cognates of one another. Fine. Here we have a list of cognates. Uh, it's available on Wikipedia. I got it from there. I simply go to Google or Wikipedia and type over their cognates and you will find such sort of examples. Look at the word night. Can you see it? No, sir. Sir, please yes, sir. Uh, zoom it. Should I zoom it on? Uh, I don't know where can I find this. Uh, you cognate. can also zoom it by touching uh, the screen now. Asad. Uh, uh, I, yeah, no. Asad, if you have got a test screen over there, so you may okay. zoom it in. Okay. It's okay, sir. It's okay. It's zoom it. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have the English word night. We have the French word uh, noite. Fine. We have the Spanish word noche. We have the German word nach. The Dutch word nach. The Afri African word nag. The Scots or Scottish word nach. Fine. We have the Swedish word night and Danish word night. So many words are there. Now, if we look at this one single word, like night from English, uh, new uh, from, uh, from French, noche from Spanish, net from German, net from Dutch, 
neck from Africans and so on. All these words are the cognates of one another in different languages. Fine. Or we may simply say that the cognate of the English word uh, uh, night, the cognate of the English word night in French is newt. Fine. The cognate of the English word night in Spanish language is noche. It is it is night in German. It is night in Dutch. Okay. The cognate of the English word night in Afrikaans language is not in uh, Afrikaans language. In Scots, Scottish language, it is Natch, so on and so forth. Fine. Uh, look at, let's look at another example. Uh, we have the word star. In the English language, we have the word star. Fine. In some secret language, we have star. In Hindustani language, Hindi language, Bengali language, I think same is the case with Punjabi language as well. We have the word Tara over there. Tara. Fine. Uh, this is another language here we have got Torah, fine. Let's talk about English. English, fine. Urdu, Pushtu, Punjabi, Bengali, and Hindi language, fine. If you look at all these languages and we look for the word star, okay? So in the English language, we have got star. In the Pushto language, we have got the word story. I hope the word is familiar to all of you, the word st story, fine. Now, the, the, the cognate of the English word star in the Pushto language is story, fine. Its cognate in Urdu is Tara. Its cognate in Punjabi language is Sitara. Its cognate in Bengali language is again Tara, okay. Its cognate in Hindi language is a sutara. Now the word star from English, story from Pushtu, sitara from Urdu, tara from uh, Punjabi, tara from uh, this one, Bengali, tara from Hindi. All these are the cognates of one another in different languages because all these words belong to different languages and all these words have got more or less the same form fine and similar meaning that is why all these words are the cognates of one another in different languages and this is how uh, this is what we call family connections that all these families are related to one another they have to they are connected to one another in terms of this sort of words is this clear so far yes sir okay sir, the... uh, as you... Ji. So, uh, as you have given the previous example, so the the words were same, the pronunciation were same. So, was was there any connection be, between those two languages? Yes, exactly. Uh, we are talking about this one, no? I mean, this one, yes, sir. Fine. Um, we do not know the meaning, but obviously, uh, the pronunci pronunciation is more or less the same, form is the same, and same must be the meaning as well. Okay. So if form is the same and meaning is the same, it means they are the cognates of one uh, of each other in different languages. So doesn't it mean that there is connection between Spanish and it, Italian? Obviously, there is, there is a linguistic connection between Spanish and Italian. Okay, Fine. sir. Got uh, okay, look at the word salam. The very last example for cognates, then we'll move to the next uh, point. In Arabic, we have salam. Okay. In Hebrew, we have uh, a word, some the word like uh, shlam, fine. In uh, so many other languages, we have a shlama, we have salim in uh, Amharic language, in Urdu, in Pushtu, Israel, and Punjabi, we have got salam or as, uh, again salam. So salam in the language or in the Arabic language, salam in the uh, uh, sorry, uh, Shalom in Hebrew language, this language, uh, Shlama, we have Salam in Urdu, we have Salam in Pashto, Salam in Punjabi. So all these words are, they, they seem to be, you know, uh, alike, they seem to be similar in terms of form, and they seem to be similar in terms of meaning as well. That is why they are the cognates of one another. And this is how uh, the, the Arabic language, Hebrew language, Pushto, Urdu, Punjabi, these languages are connected and linked 
to one another. This is example of one single word only. There must be so many other words. Just as I give you the example of brother, fine. And uh, we have the example of ma, mother, more, fine. So all these words are more or less the same. Meaning is the same and form is uh, more or less the same. So that is why they are the cognates of one another. Is this clear so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's move to comparative reconstruction. But first, let me give you an idea that why do we need comparative reconstruction? Then we'll discuss in detail that uh, what is meant by comparative reconstruction and how can we use comparative reconstruction. Look at the word star in English, fine, Tara in Hindustani language, Hindi language, and Bengali language, story in Pashto, fine, and all these other words in different languages. Which word do you think is the oldest one? Star is the oldest one, Tara is the oldest one, uh, Torah is the oldest one. Tara is the oldest one, story, or which one is the oldest? Or the other uh, sir, we, sir, we don't know exactly, exactly about this. we do not know. That is the answer. Anyone who can guess, any logical guess? Or uh, does anyone uh, even agree with this gentleman? Uh, but sir, if there are two words in one... Uh, G? Two alphabets. Fine. So if uh, if in in a word there is a two alphabet, so that might be uh, oldest one. Might be uh, the oldest one, but uh, yes. what if the word with two alphabets? Um, what if that is the you know the the modern one and the one which has got one letter that is the uh, oldest one, the original word? We do not know. We are sir, not sure. Sir, if we know which language is oldest one, then we can find that uh, which word is oldest one. Okay. Uh, English, uh, the English language is older than the Urdu language. Fine. Uh, we have the word uh, chapati or shawl in English as well as in Urdu. Shawl is actually an Urdu word. Fine. The original word is shawl, uh, shawl, shawl. Fine in Urdu. Then the, a change with a, phon a phonological change, and then it is become shawl in English. So the original word is shawl. Though Urdu language is, you know, uh, it is a modern language, and English language is an older language. But still, the word, uh, the original word is, uh, you know, that is shawl, not shawl. Fine. So uh, because English is borrowed this word from the Urdu language. So again, that is not a uh, uh, that criterion is not good enough to decide it which form is the older one. Okay, uh, now uh, what I want to say actually is that we cannot decide that which word is the original form. Okay, which one word is the original word, which word is the proto word. Proto word means the original word from which all the other words have been derived. Like if we look at the word salam, fine. The word, uh, the word Shlema, the word uh, Salim, the word, you know, uh, Shalema, all these are the cognates. A set of cognates is this. Fine, we have four or five members, uh, four or five cognates in this one single set. Now, we do not know that which of these cognates, which of these words must have been the original form. Fine, we are not sure. In order to decide this, uh, we use the strategy of the technique of comparative reconstruction. Let me check that uh, how much time are we left with. In this session, we are left with four minutes and uh, almost 35 seconds because uh, we are using an unregistered version of uh, the Zoom software. So that is why we are allowed to have a session of 40 minutes only. So uh, let's start another session. Fine. In a, uh, another meeting. Do you have a class after this? No, sir. What Do we have any other class after my class with another teacher? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. It is last class. Okay, it is the last class. So let's start another session. Fine. Okay. I'm uh, uh, sending you another link and let's join the session again. Thank you.